So you know it's one of the good things about a hiatus? There's a good thing? Yes. Being able to check Twitter on Saturday morning without getting <laughs> oh, spoiled. Oh, yes. I was able to wake up and actually check Twitter and not worry about it. Yes, that was that was nice for once. For once. <laughs> yeah, though, it's Pony411, guys. Let's go. Yes, yes, Pony 411, first episode of the hiatus. Yep, it has it, begun. This is episode 146 for the week of June 19th. I'm Nemesis, and joining me, as you heard, is Alcatraz. Give your father a happy Father's Day. I guess. Commercialism. Yes. God obey those commercial tendencies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're ripping off a couple different people there, but okay. Several. <laughs> <laughs> but still, tell your dad you love him. Yes. Yeah, so we do have a little bit of talk about. Not a new episode, unfortunately. Unfortunately. We're all well aware. Um, <laughs> we do have a bit of news, and we do have a comic, and we got some fan content, miraculously enough. We do, yes. So why don't we just jump right in? Sound good? That's what we always do. Yeah. If you want to follow along for the news, go to pony411.libson.com slash show notes. All the news is there with the links and more stuff if you want more details. So let's get started. In convention news, Galacon has announced several new panels. Go check those links out. I'm not going to go through them. Yeah, there's a few. Yeah. In fandom news, Salt Lake City's City Weekly newspaper wrote an article about the fandom, specifically about uh, conventions, apparently, which yes. is surprising considering it's uh, Utah. Well, Crystal Mountain PonyCon's happening this weekend. I know, but it's so. Utah. Yes. Kind of um, conservative <laughs> there. <laughs> a little, yes, but it was a surprisingly good article. <laughs> Must be one of those underground newspapers. I'm not sure. I have no idea. I don't live there. Yep. And apparently many Pony Reaction channels are being hit with copyright st- strikes. Mostly those who have clips from season five and six, apparently. Yeah. So watch out for that. Mm-hmm. If you have that sort of video or you watch those kind of videos regularly. It's kind of weird. Because those do kind of fall under fair use as much as I yeah, don't really uh, like reaction ID, videos. Though. It's content ID. It's an automated thing. But so apparently might- I saw some, some of them were actually were... Uh, disputing it and we're still getting de- denied i'm not which 100%. is weird the, the whole content id system is messed up anyway it is anyway by the time you hear this a new rainbow dash presents video will have released we haven't seen it yet because it hasn't released for it us has not yet for us but it's, it'll be out by the time you hear it yay and the ambient prologue beta is now out for 64-bit windows as of this point in time no other version is available yeah, I believe they said 32-bit should be coming soon. Mm-hmm. It's coming soon, and the others, they're having problems, so they want help <laughs> for Linux or oh, um, Mac OSs. Yeah, it's built on Unity, I believe. So yeah, sh- Unity. So most of the work is done. <laughs> just, just a couple other just things. A little help. Just a little help. Anyway, merchandise news. A brushable Wonderbolt dash appears to be coming, but it could also be a fake based on packaging, but it could also be a real repackaging of, like, a real thing be sold unauthorized in some other country. I don't know. But it's it's Dash um, painted on the Wonderbolt costume, or at least part of one. Yeah. Luna and Caden Sparkle Bright Brushables have been spotted in Singapore. These are light-up brushables. They're translucent and light-up. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Entertainment Earth has updated their Equestria Girls mini Pinkie Pie salon set with pictures, and this is the one with she has removable, exchangeable hair for the salon thing. An official MLP adult coloring book is coming out. No, really. It was only actually a few months ago I found out that adult coloring books were actually a thing. Yeah, they're gaining ground pretty quickly. Which apparently actually has led to a um, colored pencil shortage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Interestingly enough. Yeah. Yeah. I might have to look at that. Apparently, it's just a thing because it's kind of relaxing to sit there and color for a bit. Yes, and by adult, we don't mean 18 plus adult. They just mean... (laughs) They just mean it's intended for adults to color. So it's not like super child Still work safe. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, the Twilight book mentioned last week has been listed on Amazon now. Hey. And the upcoming Starlight Glimmer book has been renamed to Starlight Glimmer and the Secret Suite. Not the 
space this, yeah no time. space time thing <laughs> anymore i guess okay in comic news a halloween comic fest mlp issue is coming this october while it has a brand new pinkie pie cover by sarah richard it is only a re-release of friends forever number four which is the twilight and shining armor one interesting yeah because that one was a uh, kind of had a spookiness to it because they were chasing a ghost or whatever ah so it's, okay it makes sense and i guess in our final bit of news uh Equestria Girls news, actually. Yes, we're going to finally get to that point where we're going to get that. Legend of Everfree. It, not a lot, but we got a screenshot from a Polish dubber's Facebook. And it's, again, not a whole lot, but it's a screenshot. And we see Sunset and Dash both in new outfits. And it appears like, well, summer camping outfits. Because it looks like su- that's the one Sunset's wearing has got some sort of logo on it. Yep. And that's she's, got the, a, yeah. she's got a cutie mark belt buckle. Okay. It's not the only so thing. I'm guessing they're counselors. Yeah, it's, it's not the which only makes thing sense. in the screenshot. Yeah, there's also a little bit of the script where apparently Twilight's saying, oh, no, 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 no. Yep. Quester Daily speculates it might be the princess Twilight, but I'm not sure about that. Yeah, it just says Twilight Sparkle. Mm-hmm. Which doesn't help. Nope. Because there's two now. <laughs> which is good, but can be confusing. <laughs> but yes, that's the news. Not a whole lot, really. I mean, there was that other thing. There's probably Netflix. Rainbow Rocks has a new image of Dash, but that might be nothing. Yeah, we haven't seen that. Just, if you before. have Netflix, go search for My Little Pony Rainbow Rock. You'll see it. It yep. it's Dash weird. It looks like a yeah, gym yeah, outfit. Yeah, like a gym outfit. We haven't. It's just seen a black before, gym outfit with like a stripe on the side. That's pretty much it. Yep. Interesting. Not certain what it means. Yeah, that's a little hard to link to though because it's Netflix. But yeah. Yeah. Just I guess that's a thing. Yep. But that's it for the news. That's it. That's all the news. <laughs> Not a not a whole lot, really, though. Yep. Uh, I'll go. Uh, I said though, we have a comic. Friendship is Magic number forty three came out. This is the first of a new arc. It's uh, let's see, written by Thom Zaylor and art by Tony Fleeks with colors by Heather Breckel. And well, apparently, let's see, the main six are coming back from some other land where they save the day again, and they find a hot spring, and they won't decide to relax in a bit. And then after that, when they get back to Ponyville and take a well sleep for over for the night. They come back, and apparently they're uh, less than good. <laughs> In fact, they're kind of jerks at best. Outright evil at worst. <laughs> yeah. And Spike and the CMC decide they need to find out something's what's going on, and Luna's sent off to find out what's going on. And yeah, there's something weird going on. There's gonna... something. Yeah. It's interesting. I don't use that entirely in a positive manner. Um, I mean... It kind of feels it. It's particularly one. It feels like oh, you, it, it it feels like the uh, main six are kind of taken off uh, from are being held quote unquote inspired by certain pop culture figures in villainy. I'm not entirely th- enthused about that. I wish they kind of did their own unique thing, but it's like now nah, we're gonna do these things instead. We're just gonna rip off uh, or pay homage to yeah existing villains. Like mm, I was kind of hoping for something different. I mean, we've already had one t- a taste, I mean, before of two different main six and various media being evil. Rarity with a nightmare rarity there and a Twilight being midnight sparkle. But I don't know. Twilight seems like, I guess, the most obvious of like, oh, hey, ruler becomes evil. What does that mean? Oh, here, we got a tyrant now. But other than that, it's like there's I I, I don't want to spoil it. That's the problem. The thing I want to complain about the most is the thing I don't really want to spoil either. That's a problem. Yeah, I I get where you're coming from. But okay, I'll just say Rarity kind of like reminds me of Doctor Doom. You'll you'll see what I mean when you if you read this. I'm not sure. I mean, it's only the first of I think three. I, mean, I think they're doing a three issue arc this time. But anyway, know. it's a multi issue arc, and it's the first. So I I'm not entirely certain. It might still be interesting, but this is kind of a weird way to start things, in my opinion. I don't know. I'm I'm interested to see what comes next. I mean, it's kind of interesting. I just kind of feel like it's it kind of takes a it's not doing the taking the concept to its full potential is what I feel like. It feels like they're just taking the concept. Oh, let's just shove in a whole bunch of pop culture references, which kind of feels like eh, I wish for more than that. We'll have to see what comes out in the next issue. Yeah, because especially with that last panel, I'm like, oh, you're gonna do that really? But. I guess it, it, it might be worth it. I don't know yet, so I'm going to hesitate on it. I'm not going to put my recommendation out there yet. Or non-recommendation. Not until I get at least another issue and see where the things go. 
he's fine with it. So I, I'm fine with it. I, I'm not throwing a fit, but I, I might also be missing a lot of those pop culture references you're complaining about. So I'm not affected by them. I, I just yeah. So I guess we got one person recommending and uh, one not, or one holding withholding any recommendation. I, I, like I said, it, it, this is obviously a setup. Yeah, it doesn't obviously. give any. It's just a setup. So it's like again, I I'm not horribly against this, but. Again, I would want well, to see where it like goes I said, first. The concept, I like the concept. I, I found it. I even remarked it's an interesting concept. Okay, let's take our heroes and make them evil. And, and it means basic, as, you know, it's a real basic concept. It still can be interesting when done right. I feel like it's, as this stands right now, it's not quite being done right. It feels just like they're just going to use it as a vehicle to just drop references to other media. And I kind of feel like that's not taking the concept to its full potential. Possibly. Like I said, I, it really all depends on what what happens next what the next issue is going to be so i hope it winds up being better in the future because we have had rough starts that got better before but we've also had good rough starts, starts that went we've down. also had good starts that didn't go anywhere and we also had rough starts that just we've, failed again yeah we, we've had the whole gambit we'll see where this one goes so i guess that's that for the comic one okay yeah one yes it's fine and one i'm gonna wait a little bit before passing final judgment but moving on, uh, yes, uh, our main topic of discussion, I guess, uh, well, the first half, or 90% of the first half, 90%, uh, is aired of season six, uh, 12 episodes total, um, one of them being a two-parter. And, well, we've got oh, quite a bit of time, apparently, probably September, October, we're going to, that's when it's going to come back, probably, we don't know, we just know fall. Yeah. And uh, so far, so season six is um pretty good, I think. I get, uh, this is... Yeah, it's a little off the cuff. <laughs> yeah. Season six so far has been, I guess, pretty good. Season five, at this point in time, season five was, I think, overall kind of lower, I think, because it did have a couple really bad missteps by this point. Yeah. Well, not really that, bad, but uh, missteps for sure. We had some, it was with season five at this point, we had some below average, a handful of below average episodes, I uh, believe. Princess Spike and the um, Trouble Shoes one. Yeah, or, or we thought they were, you know... Not up but, to par. Yeah. With this one, we've had some average ones, but we haven't really had as many below average. We haven't had any, any or at least in our opinion. There's yeah. people obviously disagree. I mean, there's one episode in particular that was extremely divisive on it. Yeah. But, I mean, personally, I mean, this kind of... Yeah. I, I don't think we've had any below average. Yeah, I think the worst we've had really is well been average. Yeah. So I mean, so it's in a kind of at this point we're in a better position than we were at the end of season five. Uh, I think season four, five overall was still pretty good. It just I think I think we both agreed though that season four is still at that time was still the best overall. I think so. We yeah. agreed on that. I know a lot of people still th- go with season two. Season two was pretty good. Although I personally feel sometimes season two gets a kind of gets a free pass in some ways. It, it same, same with, with season, season one. Season one because there's a nostalgia factor to nostalgia. that. Nostalgia thing plus there's a whole lot i could go into that a big huge thing about whole all that stuff uh, yeah i'm quite certain you could i could go into why we, we won't die. because I that's could. not our discussion this time but you yeah. could i you definitely could but, but yeah yes, I, I would agree se- yeah season five i think has been not season, five, season six has been pretty strong so far with just couple i think the problem a part of the problem is um the weaker episodes have been kind of backloaded we're like you know the ones were kind of the ones were not not bad episodes just the weakest so far of the season have been the ones like we just got them all yeah like right in one clump and we're hoping it doesn't continue that trend yeah just one clump of oh yeah <laughs> so i think at this point i still have a positive outlook for season six although at this there's some stuff i still wish was addressed um particularly de- um regarding a certain character has been added uh i would say two characters that have been added. Well, one in particular who's been added as a seemingly a long-term actual yes. main return current yes. reincast there, there's, member. There's another one that's been added that's sitting as a potential that we haven't seen yet that yeah. could still... It's like a ticking time bomb going off there. Oh, no! <laughs> we, have, we have yet to see what happens. Yeah, this, this particular... I'm, I'm, of course, I'm referring to Starlight Glimmer. I just feel at this point they she still doesn't really belong yet. Yeah, it's it's since the beginning of this season, it's been the worry what what's going to be with Starlight, yeah. and every it episode kind of, that shows yeah, up it just feels, doesn't change the opinion. Yeah, it's it just, like it feels like she still feels like you, she's been kind of shoehorned in. Like, why? It, yeah, it's like 
we ha- haven't given enough to like her, but haven't given enough to hate her either. Mm-hmm. I mean, because that was the thing was season five. I was super excited about Starlight. Like, Where's she gonna go? And then season six, the finale came. I'm like, was it's weird we how over be- the course of two episodes I was soured so quickly on a new character. <laughs> and it's like it's because I was so ex- pumped up for this character. She seems so interesting. And then season six was I was hoping with the premiere that season six would finally, you know right it so to speak right the wrong and it didn't just kind of went she's there okay what do i do now i guess we could probably go ahead and start listing yeah or do our standard yeah our list our best or worst to best what we think of the individual and where they yeah kind of yeah on our list so far 11 episode list is because we're going to count yeah the 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 premiere is two parts as one so 11 I'm going to go ahead and start us off at, I guess, number 11. I'm going to put that, go ahead and say Applejack's Day Off. And I'm totally going to agree with you. This is our average. This is average. This is so average. It's just there. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's nothing. That's the thing. It was Like I said, nothing is really wrong with the episode, but there's nothing particularly great about the episode either. It's just, it's watchable. It's enjoyable, but you soon forget it really quickly. Yeah, it it. it it doesn't change anything, really. I mean, if you notice almost every episode, there's something the fandom talks about for a good long while about every episode. This one was like, what was it? They, the steam valve. <laughs> the that's steam, it. That's what became the episode meme. Was and, the uh, face I guess, in the steam and, valve. And yeah, Rarity's wrinkly face. Oh yeah, that too. That was it. But And then they kind of like, and it had absolutely nothing to do with the story. Yeah, so it's just one of those. It's an episode that's just really for easily forgettable, which is unfortunate. It's not. It's not a bad episode. It's just so. It's just so average. It's there. Yeah, and that's this pro- and that's what makes it so weak. Really. Yep. Comparatively, anyway. It's it, thankfully it's no Princess Spike or what about Discord? Yeah, like like we said earlier, we didn't think there's any below average episodes. Mm-hmm. It wasn't anything that we thought was. It's also no uh, Spike at your service or. Yeah. It's just yeah. we just have an average. Hopefully, we won't get that that kind of thing this season. Anyway, yeah, I guess uh, number ten though, uh, Flutter Brother. That's why I put that. And I still yeah. agree, yeah. Flutter, Flutter Brother. Brother. Uh, I think again, this one only gets saves itself from the bottom was just because it's got a notable addition of oh hey look there's Flutter size family. Yeah, her entire immediate family is right there, or at least as far as we know, immediate family, our entire immediate family. Yeah, yeah. could be we, just we like never the Pi know family. When... Surprise! There's another sibling. They've <laughs> done that twice now yeah adding siblings that we've never seen before yeah so at least this one we knew it was going to happen before it mm-hmm. happened yeah so it's early this episode i mean and also this episode is weird because it was one of those i've seen it, it was kind of divisive it's basically uh based on um how much you enjoyed zephyr as a character whether i mean if you really hated him you really hated the episode which is well i don't really hate the episode but i do not like zephyr but I just noticed this just because Zephyr was such a big thing. It was like you really hated the guy. And it also came down to whether or not you just decided if he deserved his uh, little uh, happy ending, so to speak. I mean, a lot of people really hated this because he didn't deserve that. Or there's the, also the good old, this is a little too close to home. Please stop. Yeah, there was a lot of, uh, this is really making me uncomfortable. The, the, what he this did. This is too close to what I've personally experienced. Or course. to what you've seen others yeah, experience. That too. I've seen a lot of that where they do not like Zephyr because they've seen this before. Or they've personally been on the yeah. receiving end and someone like Zephyr. Yeah. Because Zephyr is an experience. Yeah. <laughs> and he'd spin that positively. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do not like that. Yeah, so that really it's, doesn't help it's the an episode, episode that is only saved from the bottom just because of the fact it's that one notable thing otherwise it'd be kind of like yeah again it's there we get yeah i mean i know a lot of people also put give it high praise because it's a fluttershy episode which is very different from other fluttershy yeah, episodes so we, we, we i think we would be remiss in you know not mentioning, mentioning that <laughs> it's fluttershy not learning how to be assertive it's her being assertive to it's, someone else <laughs> it, she didn't have to learn it she already was and she was able to already use what she's learned mm-hmm. So it's like, yay. It's different from other Fluttershy episodes, but the thing is, I've always been kind of down on Fluttershy episodes just because I'm not that super enthusiastic about Fluttershy as a character. So for me, it's like Fluttershy episodes tend to be not necessarily bad, just kind of weak compared to other episodes. Even Dash episodes can be a bit more entertaining in a sense, just hey, even no. if they tend to be more a little action-y. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So... It's different. It just for me, it's not really different. It's a lateral difference, not an improvement or just or or making it worse or anything like that. 
it's just lateral. It's just different for me. Number nine, though, I'm not sure if this is where we're going to... I'll see if we'll have... Uh, number nine, I have Newbie Dash. Oh, wow, yeah. We're <laughs> definitely going to disagree on that one. Uh, um, uh, even though I did have things about Newbie Dash, I did not put it quite that low. Go ahead, explain your reasons before yeah. I put mine. Again, I think it's it's just the, it's the Dash episode, so for me, it's already I kind of got that penalty against it. Like, yep, it's harder for me to enjoy those. I mean, it's not bad or anything. It's just... I think it's one of those, it's kind of got a, it's kind of, it's okay, I guess. Uh, the thing was, um, for a lot of people as well, not necessarily for me, but a lot of people, it's like, the, it's the cringe humor episode, which was super divisive, and a lot of people reacted really negatively to it. Um, I personally thought it was, that kind of stuff was funny, but at the same time, it's like, okay, it kind of, I don't know, it's just kind of, it's just a, since it's a Dash episode, it just wasn't super high on my list when I really thought about it personally i'm surprised it made it so high on for me because <laughs> i don't like cringe humor but yeah for number nine i actually put and i probably a disclaimer the next five that i have on my list i you could argue changing them up and i wouldn't straight disagree with you it, it's this point again where it's tough to place them but i put on your marks hmm and number nine hmm hmm because, I mean, it, it was a good CMC episode, but you know, the whole um, disparate pieces thing just kind of, mm-hmm. you know, it was enjoyable, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For me, number eight, that's where I put on your marks. That's where you put that one? <laughs> yeah, right above there. Uh, yeah, for me, it was just it's kind of the sign of the same reasoning. Um, it felt as kind of getting, starting to inching, kind of falling back. Because the CMC episodes initially were really looked down on, and yeah. then as time went on, they got better. This is one that kind of felt like it kind of fell backwards a bit and that it started getting close to the old ones, which were not as highly regarded. And I kind of I know what, exactly why those weren't highly regarded. So it kind of felt like it was kind of a couple steps backwards compared to particularly uh, like the last one of uh, season five. It just felt like it was a couple steps back. It was just Apple Bloom fretting over nothing again. And we've kind of seen that before. And it's like, it was okay. And it just kind of it, it did feel a little disjointed. I think that was my one of my complaints about this episode was just it was really disjointed feeling. So that's why I put it pretty low, but not as low as Newbie Dash. <laughs> that's number eight. And so I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for oh boy. For number eight, I have Spice of Your Life. Oh. Yeah, it's down there. But like I said, this next set you could switch up and I wouldn't disagreeably disagree with you because these all run almost equal to each other. But yeah, it was... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, there was a just a, it, Yeah. It, I can't really say a huge amount about it. I mean, it had... A, a, some good points here and there, but yeah, <laughs> that that it, when it all comes down to it, it, it was nice to see a couple things here and there, nice to see a couple changes, but overall, it just was kind of a all right episode. Yeah, yeah, I put at number seven is where I put spice up your life, <laughs> <laughs> so slightly higher again. Well, that's uh, just because you have newbie dash down there, yeah, and I don't. Uh, sp- the thing about spice up your life is, I think we we said it was a overall strong way to end out the mid-season or end out the, before the hiatus and i still stand by that it's just part of it is just it's still pretty good overall it's just i think one of the things we didn't really talk about it um was the moral was not totally well presented yeah that's probably my biggest issue i mean on the surface it, you really have some to- people pointed out it does feel sometimes like critics are always wrong which is not I, it's another misstep yeah. of that's i don't think that's what they're trying to go for but it kind of can you can see why people come to that conclusion yeah so it's another one it's i think it's more like hey stop trying to force your opinion down your other people's throat yeah which is a actually pretty good thing that a lot of people can heed yes uh but uh a lot of people misinterpret as critics are always wrong and some people even went as far as this is kind of a weird um mockery of people criticizing the show itself which i think is a little too far a little but also it, for me it's just kind of right here because it's got a pretty good song that i liked and it just yeah you know, it's it's fun it's just kind of like it's in the new characters were pretty great it's just there's that other character the critic itself was kind of eh, boring yeah which i think was kind of the point but i'm not sure if it totally worked yeah i see what you mean there she likes boring so she's boring yeah it's not like mod though who's should be boring but isn't <laughs> yeah and speaking of at mod oh. at number seven Ooh. i have gift of mod pie 
Well, like again, like I said, you could swap any of these, and I wouldn't dis immediately disagree with you. Um, but yeah, I have it here because, well, it wasn't again. None of these are bad. These are all above <laughs> average. <laughs> we already hit average right at the beginning. Okay, We're you going can stop shielding there. yourself. Uh, I still feel like I have to because. I've seen parts of this fandom. <laughs> I don't want to be on the receiving <laughs> end of it. <laughs> but yeah, it, it it was good, but I don't know. Mod doesn't get it. I don't know. I don't enjoy Mod as much as other people do. I don't dislike her, but she just doesn't click with me that well. All right. All right. For me at number six, I'm wondering if how this is going to get, uh, I'm wondering what kind of reaction I'm going to get from here. I put number six, I put the crystalline, the premiere. At number six, right? right there in the middle. I said it. I think I said it at the beginning of the season. I think the crystalline is the weakest premiere we've gotten so far. Yes, and even I including just... season threes, which people before was called were calling the weakest premiere we've gotten. Yeah, I, I and I would agree with that. I part. think the part of the well it does something new, which was in this case it was um it we've never seen it before, which was it had two plots going on at once, an A plot and a B plot, which then converged at the end. We've never really seen that in this show before. Yeah, I still felt like um. Starlight's plot was a little stretched out and kind of didn't feel like if it, it felt like it was an episode that was stretched way out to fill two episodes. It's like the opposite pacing problem that yeah, we had. we usually have the problem if it feels like a three part is compressed to a two part or a two part compressed to a one. Now it's like we have a one ep single episode stretched out to two, and it's like the, guys. And, and another character probably didn't help your view on yeah, things. Starlight in general, just a problem with, with, with Starlight, just it didn't sell me on Starlight at all, which is still a problem at this point. And Flurry Heart was like, why? Just everything. It, we, I finally, you see Flurry Heart, we, they can reveal Flurry Heart's an alicorn. The qu general question, I think this feels like the consensus of the fandom is, why? Just why? There's no reason. Uh, that's, uh, that's what it feels like. It's, that's another problem. Is, is, um, if They made this whole scene about the fact that Flurry Heart's an alicorn that's never happened before and there's never been a baby alicorn. And then, and then there's no payoff. At if least, there's yeah. a payoff later, maybe, but it feels like there's supposed to be one, and then it was just brought up and then swiftly re dismissed, even though the whole point of was she's an alicorn, that's a big problem, and the villain was basically a baby. <laughs> I mean, really? <laughs> I think that's his biggest problem. It's just it felt like it was a two-parter, didn't need to be a two-parter, and uh, the B-plot in particular felt really stretched out, and... And it could have been its own episode, probably, and been fine. And the main plot, or the A plot, with Flurry and everything, just didn't really totally work. I mean, it was still an enjoyable episode overall. It's just a lot of weird problems with that one. For number six, I have no second prances. Ah, okay, wow. No second prances with, you know, Twilight, Starlight, Trixie. Mm -hmm. Again, it, it was... Uh, like obviously i enjoyed it but i don't know I, I, i'm not super sold like like you i'm not super sold on starlight i'm not as against starlight as you are i'm a bit closer to neutral i think same with trixie it's just <laughs> it, it, it was good and it had some good points i did like how they handled trixie near at the end with the that right. whole bit I, I did like that but some of the other parts yeah, no, it was it was all right. I mean, all right. Yeah, it, it, there's some things that I think could have done better. Some things that I th think felt a little forced, but not too much. But yeah, right. Okay. All right for me, number five. This is where I put the gift of the mod pie. You put the gift up here. Uh, -huh. uh, I think this one was just kind of fun. I I actually kind of enjoy mods character that just really deadpan thing i don't know why i just kind of like it. i can't explain why i honestly can't that, that's the, pretty much the resounding explanation that i see it's just people like, like her because they like her and that's about yeah, it yeah she's just i think it's just maybe it's just the way it's just, it's it really just works how she just doesn't react really to anything but i just kind of like this episode overall it's just you know it's, uh, the goofiness of pinky tempered by uh ma there's a funny couple funny scenes i liked rarity emulating pinky at the beginning is just a lot of fun. I think I guess the only big um, problem I have with this is like, why didn't Rarity just make the stupid bag herself? Yeah, that was I think the biggest problem with it, and that seemed that was generally the biggest problem people had with it overall was why didn't Rarity make the bag? Well, that and the Pinkie Pie and her cannon. Was yeah, the, the other one thing they they think you know 
She's not all about her canon. It's like, well, it's no, not, she it's, isn't. It's but not necess- no, I think that's as people um people people misinterpreting it. We already it's, went it's over just this. An, the, yeah, the object. It's just she just really values the object, and yeah. that's okay to like have a, something you really like and be uh, hesitant to give up. <laughs> Doesn't mean that's all you are. Yeah, but yeah, I think overall it's actually still a pretty fun episode. And it was pretty. Yeah, obviously it's in my top the top half of my list, so I liked it a lot. It's just. That I think the only real problem I think was just that weird little oops. Just kind of overlooked that. Number five, I have the crystalline. Ah, this is where I put this one. Um, again, like I said, I'm not as against starlight as you are, so it wasn't as big of a subtractor for me. So that's why I got a little bit higher. Again, though, you can swap these out, and I wouldn't be this last mm-hmm. five. I wouldn't disagree. But yeah, basically the same reasons you said. I lost of wasted potential. Yeah, lost. Yeah, yeah. That, that's pretty much it. There, there was some it, it, that it didn't, didn't feel like it lived up to what it could have been. Yeah, there was a lot of things that you know I, that didn't need to be there, or that probably should have been there. Just mm-hmm. a lot of little things like that. But it also had it other good still parts weirdly, to it as weirdly well. enjoyable, even though it has all these faults. That's a weird yeah. problem with it. So yeah, that's where I put it. Number five. Mm-hmm. So I, I number four, I put Gauntlet of Fire. You put Gauntlet of Fire at four. Mm-hmm. The Spike episode. The Spike episode. One of the better Spike episodes we ever got, but it's still a Spike episode. <laughs> <laughs> so it can't get number one, obviously. That's insane. But um, yeah, it, it was weirdly a really good um like follow up to Dragon Quest and all that stuff, and it was just hey, we had a brand new character, you know, Ember, who showed up, who was really well done, and just the whole thing about getting all this stuff about dragons we never knew before, and just. It was just a really well done Spike episode because one Spike being annoying, it was well generally, and we got got to see goofiness with Rarity and Twilight trying to disguise themselves and not always succeeding and all that stuff. And of course, there's a good old why didn't Twilight use magic? It's a little simple. That will cause a nasty diplomatic incident, probably. <laughs> so it's just uh, this oh, is just an unusually episode. great Spike episode, which was just really well done overall and had a lot of tension and just, oh hey look spikes the dragon lord no he's not <laughs> no he's not <laughs> he just he gave it up because he doesn't want it okay so yeah it's, it's number four it's a really well done spike episode probably the best one we've ever gotten as, as i said number four for me and this is where i've these ones are my top four they do get separated from the last five right they don't get swapped with the other ones i mm-hmm. actually put newbie dash up here ah this is four. where you put newbie dash and yes i will fully admit it's because part of it is because it's a dash episode um now that being said like i said earlier i don't like cringe humor as much it's not really my thing especially when it's against dash because obvious (laughs) reasons um but there was you know other it's dash she's a wonder bolt Mm. it it's you know what's the word for that accumulation of a whole bunch of things yeah but yeah it was just i just really enjoyed seeing dash again (laughs) on her own episode Uh, becoming wonder bolt I'll admit it on this you one. Big dork. Yep. But uh, th- it did give some other. There were a couple important parts to um, her character. Yeah. Progression of her character. Of course, I would have called. I would have called you out if you put it at number one. I was like, okay. That's bold. Oh, you, no, that, you put that, it at number be, one. I would have no, called you out. <laughs> no, it, it is not a number one. It has enough problems. I think that it wouldn't make it that high. Like cringe humor. I don't like cringe humor. So right there, can't be number one. But there was some important parts to to things, and I think mm-hmm. th- there's growth to her character involved in this all right well number three i put no this is where i put no second prances weirdly enough this is the episode where i talked about it's like it's weird in that it's really enjoyable but at the same time you don't it's want still like. super focused on starlight and trixie so it's weird for me and yeah i still put it in number three i wound up like okay fine yes it's actually pretty good oh despite those two problems uh, yeah, I think it's, I think um, I someone just disagree- actually uh, argued a little bit about it, but I still stand by the assertion that uh, Starlight feels like Diet Twilight. Diet Twilight, noticeably worse. Um, tries to be this, as hard as it can to be the same, but noticeably worse. Like, oh, we, oh, sorry, we're out of regular. Are you okay with Diet? No. no. <laughs> of course, and there's because people are like, so what's Sunset Shimmer then? She's like Mr. Pib. If Twilight's Dr. Pepper, she's Mr. Pibb. Noticeably different, but not in a way that's detrimental or necessarily better, even. Just different. And so if you rest, if you say, hey, do you have Dr. Pepper? They don't say, oh, so, sorry, we have Mr. Pibb. You're like, okay, that's cool. 
You know, that's what it is. And this is as far as I can take a soda analogy without going completely off the rails, <laughs> yeah. I think. But yeah, this is a weird episode and just, it was overall really good. It just, there's a couple weird little things. I think there was a one line that I wasn't really too thrilled with and Twilight I was being odd about it, but I think it's kind of in character for her to be just basically just because I think Trixie is weird sticking point for Twilight. Although I realized something when I was thinking about this episode, and I think this episode really feel, feel, follows the formula, and inadvertently, I'm, I'm hoping inadvertently, of a lot of old Twixie fix, believe it or not, which is Trixie comes back, except we swap out Starlight for Twilight. Trixie comes back, and no one wants to give her a second chance, but Twilight's the only one who's willing to do so and help her out with the magic sword or whatever. I mean, seriously, there's a lot of Trixie fix which will follow this very pattern, except, well, they had kissing at the end. <laughs> which, well, with this, with now Star Trek, they're, the they're thing, very there's well now people adding have. kissing at the end. <laughs> so yeah. that's, I think, it's a part of the problem. For, it's just kind of, it's weird, so it follows that same formula, but it's still overall very enjoyable, just that weirdness for me. But so that's why it gets to number three, but no higher. But no higher. No, can't be any higher. No, can't. <laughs> Too many problems for it to be actually any higher than that. All right. My number three, Hearth's Warming Tale. Ah. The Christmas episode in May. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it was really well done. It, yeah. We knew the story, but it didn't matter. It, it was predictable. We don't care because it was yeah. still, it, it put its own touch on it. And they did a really good job. Mm. It was also Starlight being evil again. Yeah, which was, oh, which hey, look, great. it's only a lot better. <laughs> Starlight is a good villain. And not to mention good songs, too. Mm-hmm. It, it's a musical. Yeah, it, it was just a really good episode. Mm-hmm. Which is why I put it at number two. <laughs> you put it at number two. <laughs> Heartwarming tale, number two, yeah. It's A Christmas Carol, which... Okay, I'm a bit of a sucker for a Christmas girl. If I'm going to, I'm going to be kind of honest. It's probably one of my favorite Christmas stories. It's a good one. And yeah, so it's yeah, it's a Christmas Carol, but you know what? So what? Mm-hmm. It's a it's a good take on it. It, it twists it a little bit just so it's more pony. And yes, in Starlight, being a villain again was a lot better than her in her other appearances. It's just one. I think it's our Starlight's best showing so far this season was her being a villain, which. I think it just kind of speaks to the fact that they still haven't really done enough with the character to really make her her own thing. They're just trying to emulate Twilight, and it's not working. Whereas this shows, hey, look, remember she was a villain? Remember how fun that was? Yeah. And yeah, so this is what it was. It, just, it was just a lot of fun because she's a villain again, and it's just a classic story, and it's got great songs, including that amazing uh, Luna one at the end, yep. which was still weird because it wasn't Kazumi, but okay. It was, still worked. It was great. Yeah. For number two, I put Gauntlet of Fire. Ah, there we go. That's where it is. That's where it is. It. See, I'm not as dead set against Spike as you are, so it gets a higher position. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was Spike in a good episode. It, it was well written, and we got Princess Ember, which is a lot of you people's... remember. <laughs> <laughs> Again with that <laughs> reference. <laughs> Again with that one. But yeah, it, it's, a, it's a new waifu for a lot of oh, people. Oh, yes. <laughs> Dragon waifu. Yes. It, it, it's a good character. We've got a brand new, mm-hmm. really cool character. Um, Why is she so sun sun? <laughs> and it's that, that's great, by the way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, traveling back to the Dragonlands, seeing the dragons again. There was a whole bunch of really cool environments that we got to see. Um, great action scenes. It, it it was just really well done. I still want to know what the heck happened with Spike's eyes when he grabbed the the um, scepter. It's something to do with something the happened with him there, and they never They'll explained They'll never it. expound on that. <laughs> yeah, but there it is. Number two, Gauntlet of Fire. Which, if by process of elimination, you keep me track, that means there's only one episode left. We can't we either of both, us mention, so I guess we put it both in number one. We both at number one. The Saddle Row Review. Yep, It Saddle was Row. just, that <laughs> was an amazing episode. It was. Through and through. There was almost, I could barely find anything really wrong with that. Remember I, when you were talking yeah, about it? Yeah. I, I, I was having a nitpick to find something wrong with it. Yeah, it was all of the main six on screen, mm-hmm. on point. It's just it, that episode was on fire. It it, it was amazing. It, it <laughs> yeah, I, I can't find anything wrong with it. Every I character mean, was written well. It was very hilarious. Well. It, it used it, brand new it, stuff uh, we'd never seen in this show before for like camera stuff. Yeah, we'd never seen that in this show before. 
it was just it was funny. Final Scratch showed up in a way that didn't feel forced. Yeah, it was like when Twilight pulled her out of a bush randomly. Yeah, and that was second weird. prances. That was just weird. That was a little weird. But yeah, but it, it was still kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, this everything about even the new character we, that was added was or characters were that were added were Got pretty great too. Spoons. Yeah, spoon clothing. Spoon clothing. It's amazing. Yeah, it's everything. I mean, and you even had the bonus of no spike or starlight. <laughs> yeah, bonus. It was just great, and if we get another episode like that, okay. If every episode yes. is like that for the could... season, okay, I'm yeah. good with that. <laughs> it it was. They set a bar. Like, yeah, it set a high bar, and I, I said did. it before, and I'm still. It's definitely if overall, I'm I'm gonna say overall through the entire series, it's definitely within top ten. I would probably agree with you on that one. Yeah, it's one it, of it the is best episodes there. of the series. I'm not. I just not hyperbole. Yeah, it it's good. It's it just is. So <laughs> it it's it's set a bar for the season. I mean, unless something in the later half of the season blows me away, this will be my probably my number one or two of the season. Nothing's this going... we're seeing of the finale, while that goes and everything. You don't think anything else is going to be able to sweep it out of the way? Uh, there's <laughs> <laughs> wow. Took you a second. This is like this is so far the best of the season. Period. It's one of the best of the series. And uh, well, barring something crazy happening in the second half, I'm almost certain it's going to be like number one or two on the list when we get to the, the end of the season. Yeah, it, it, I it, mean, I'm trying to think of scenarios that could possibly beat this one. There's one in the top of my head, which I'm really hoping for. It still hasn't happened. Sunlight comes back and it is immediately sunlight, you know, yes, romance I with Twilight. Yes, I approve sunlight happening. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sunlight. Just sunlight happens. happening. Yes, that would basically get <laughs> number one best episode ever. No, this is it. Shut it down. We're done. We're it's everything is everything's great. It will never happen. Says you. But yeah, I, or sunset just appearing at all would just be yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. That's the best of the season. Or sun sunset appears and they ruin her. They wouldn't do that. They could. I don't see how. It's within the realm of possibility. Yeah, they wouldn't do that. They know better. <laughs> they know what would happen if they wreck that character. They have a very angry person at their doorstep. They have several <laughs> angry peoples. But yeah, that's that's the season so far. That's our list. I don't know if you agree or disagree. Oh, Fail fee to they, fight us they on probably it. Probably disagree. Fight us. Fight Pussy me. Cuffs. <laughs> fight me. <laughs> yes. But yeah, I'm 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 hoping season things threats. continue to go well. Um, Match the quality saddle review. Yes. <laughs> or saddle row and wreck. However you want to call it. Whichever one you want to call it. But that that is definitely an episode to look for as, you know, an example of quality. Yeah, it's one of those like, this is a great episode. This is like one of the best episodes. There's also Lesson Zero. There's also Twilight's Kingdom. There's Party of One. <laughs> yeah. Those are all great episodes too, but this is like, whoa. Yes. But that's it. We can yep. stop babbling about that because we're actually pretty, caught, went up pretty long on that. So I guess we're in fan content now. So we'll go ahead and start off with the three songs you picked out there. Yes, like you said, it's my job to say that. I have three songs. <laughs> we will start off with an interesting one that just recently came out. This is My Little Demons by Punk or Foxy, whichever one you want to call it. This is different. <laughs> this is heavy hitting genre defying song i'm not entirely certain what you could call this they call it th something else themselves it is heavy it is dark but it's got a really cool feel to it. it i'm not usually into you know dark stuff but this is it's just cool it's a thing <laughs> I, I heard it was, yeah it's a thing i i don't know what to really say about it other than that um it, it's tough to describe it the really other is. thing is even though it's weird even though it's short it still manages to be repetitive which is weird I and told the end. There's, a, there's one, but... a bit at the end which is cool, but for me, it's just kind of like this is kind of like oh, okay. This and... But uh, yeah, it's it's a thing though. I guess I guess it's, you have to experience it yourself. Yeah, there's it's part of a short five song EP. I would actually recommend if you like this one. I'd say check the rest of them out. 
the other ones actually use clips from the show too, so they're even more pony related. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's the first one. The next one I have is a remix of "It's Gonna Work" by Enter Matrix. <laughs> It's a really fun, bouncy remix of the song. It changes the original a lot, which the original song was different from what we normally get, and this one changes it from its original, but it still works. It, yeah, it's going to work. But yeah, I I liked it, so. I like that it retains the style of the original song, even if only vaguely. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, yeah, the Indian style of it, it still kind of retains that, even though it's maybe not, a little. <laughs> it, it, it's it kind weird. of there's a, there's a way they do the the main line of the music that still manages to kind of keep the feeling mm-hmm. of the song. That and the choice of instrumentation. Well, yeah, that too. too. But so the, those kind of make it still feel like it's in kind of has still has the roots in the song without you know not completely changing it up. Yeah, which is good. So it's very interesting overall. <laughs> the last song I have. This is another interesting one. This is Gimme Rainbow Dash acoustic version by ISMBOF. This this is one's a bit interesting. Um, the song itself is actually fairly old, but it was never released until a little bit ago as the basically five-year anniversary of the non-acoustic version being released. ISMBOF has been a mainstay, or was a mainstay. He was one of the original, one of the old musicians, and disappeared for a bit and now came back. Mm-hmm. So I'm really happy to be able to feature one of his songs again. But yeah, it is... It's a wonderful acoustic version. Um, ISM is really good with guitars, I think. Um, and the song, it's got a lot of emotion to it. You, you can mm. just feel, and when you're listening to it, there's a lot of emotion into the song, and I, I really, really like that. Yeah, it's very nice guitar work on it. Um, it was also very soothing, which is, yeah. Surprising, because the original's a rock song. Yeah, it's a very soothing song. I've never really listened to the original, so I don't know. It's five years old, so I wouldn't yeah. doubt it. <laughs> Although, I'm not sure how long the original is or anything, but it did feel slightly, just slightly too long. But yeah, that's what I've got. Yeah. Yeah, I have a fanfic. I actually have one. Uh, this one is called Entry Number 649 by Tetsuni Risu. Um, yeah, it's a good I, word for it. <laughs> um, I don't want to describe it for you because... Can would- you? Can you describe it? I don't. It, I'll just say this: it's marked with the horror and mystery tags, and it's it's mo- it says trial and rarity. It's mostly rarity, though. Yeah, it's um, also got a very different uh, formatting than you're probably used to. It's creepy. It, it says horror, but it's not horror as a lot yeah. of people would think. It's it, it's va- it it's, is horror, it's but it's vaguely it Lovecraftian. Use, yeah, it, it's the unsettling. Yeah, it's creepy kind of thing. Something to read when you're right, right before you're going to go to bed and Stark and you're alone yeah, in the house. It's one of those, there's nothing in the words that's, you know, horrifying, but it, it leads your mind into places. And then your brain just goes, there's something going wrong. It, it, it leads it into a direction and then leaves a hole. Yeah. And you, for your you, mind to fill. Yeah, and you're, you're just like, there's something really, really wrong here. Yeah, uh, when I saw the author, I had to quickly check something. This mm-hmm. author has actually been around for a very long time. Kitsune mm-hmm. Risu is known for their darker tone. Mm-hmm. Um, this things. was there was an a, a fic a while back that he actually canceled that I was enjoying. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but yeah, like like you said, the writing is 
is different. The the writing style, the, the, the formatting, the, the narrative on it is more um, second person almost. It, well, it's uh-huh. it's it's a narration from the point of a rarity. It's yeah. but it's not it's not first. It's person. like it's her journal. Yeah, it's it's basically entries from her journal. It references things we don't get to see ever. Yeah. Um, you, you know, one of the things that it reminded me of, if you've ever seen, and I don't think you have the movie Primer, there are sections in it where there's narration, where yeah. it, and it's basically the same exact style, where it's like reading from a diary kind of a thing. And I think yeah. it really helped with this story. That was definitely the way to do it. Uh huh. Yeah, it's it's many chapters, but it's only ten. That's less than ten thousand words. Yeah, it's it's. I think really, they did it, it, really it was well. posted literally last night. And I was like, "Ooh, this looks interesting," and I'm glad I looked at it. <laughs> yeah, I was not <laughs> expecting to see that author show up in a feature from you, but I'm glad it did. It was very well written, even if it is unsettling. Yes, well, that's part of the reason why I featured it because it's so unsettling. But um, moving away from that, though, I there is an update. The Sunset Shimmer of the Mysterious Meridewell did just update a little bit. One new chapter. Bit. Yep. Um, she fights a um Earth Pony who's apparently a warrior. Begins to fight. Yeah, begins. It's that's yeah. Who challenges her or something? Yeah, that's that's the gist of the. Chapter. There's another fight going on. As yeah, well, there's too. another fight too. But that's the primary thing was Sunset fights this chest stallion who challenges her. So that's it. That's our first post hiatus beginning episode thing. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> Those were our opinions. <laughs> go yell at us. <laughs> For being wrong. Or praise us for being right. I like that too. <laughs> yes, those are good. But if you like this episode and want to hear the past and future ones, you can go to pony411.libson.com. Every episode there. You can go through the RSS feed or whatever. There's also iTunes. Search for Pony411 there and, you know, rate and review it. There's also Stitcher. Stitcher.com. Or it's iOS or Android apps. And there's YouTube.com slash Pony411. All our episodes are, you know, uploaded there too. So like, comment, subscribe, and you can also check out our other channel, Pony Four One One Plays, where we play video games. Right now, we're in the middle of Left Left for Dead Two. Hatsune Miku skins. Yeah, well, that's not the only skin we're going to use. Upcoming, we'll see more. Just not for a bit. There's two more episodes of the. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least well, actually one more by the time you hear this, hopefully. But moving on back to the podcast stuff. Back to ponies. <laughs> Yeah, back to the podcast and pony stuff. Who knew? There's also PonyvilleLive.com. Episodes are go show up there as they're f- uploaded to YouTube. Or Ponyville FM every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Easter. However, it'll be every other Tuesday over this hiatus thing. Thing. Yes, this hiatus thing. It's a thing. It's a thing now. Yes. Mid-season hiatus is ugh. ugh. If you want to contact us for questions, comments, criticisms, news bits, whatever, you can do so at our email account, which is pony411podcast at gmail.com. There's also our Facebook page, facebook.com slash pony411. You can like us there and check out new episodes that come out, including the aforementioned video game stuff. Or there's Twitter. We're at pony411, which is where we make jokes and observations like the fact that it's been a week since the last episode and it's kind of upsetting that there's no episode this week. However, it's also nice that, like, like I said at the top, we don't have to check. worry about spoilers. <laughs> we, yeah, we don't have to worry about spoilers when we wake up in the morning. Or you can follow our personal Twitters. I'm at Nemesis Prime One. He's at Alcatraz with an underscore at the end and seven to seven to T. Yep. Look at me and my transmission repair. Yes, transmissions. Uh, it's going to cost me a couple hundred dollars. Oh no! More. But I think it's fixable. Yay. So that's it for this episode, and yes, we like I said, we are now actually officially on our bi-weekly schedule, so next week there will be nothing. Yep, we are in hiatus Except for LP mode. stuff. Except for, except for video game stuff, there will be nothing pony-related for the next week. We'll come back in two weeks for stuff. We'll do something. We'll figure something out. Don't worry. It'll be fine. Hopefully that Equestria Girls thing comes out soonish. <laughs> uh, probably not until <laughs> September a bit. That's it. Hope you enjoyed. And until next time, please... Pony responsibly, guys. Good night. Bye.